Thank you. Do we have uh, Sonny Vickers not with us tonight? Uh, Marion Ramsey, not with us? Okay. Tim Carroll is here. I know that. Come on down. <laughs> Just so we're clear, that's District 5. And if my, if my opponent's not here, do I get his five minutes too? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need it, then. <laughs> well, uh, good evening, everybody. Let me first of all say thank you to Chairman Hofschild and the LCDP for hosting this event tonight. It's always a good opportunity to come out and talk to the constituents about who we are and why we serve. You know, there are some time limits, so getting, getting, getting into the nuts and bolts of some vision. I'd like to just really focus more on the basics. And the first basic I want to talk about is the hat that we wear the most, and that is being a public servant. Now, being a public servant requires three basic things in my book that I have demonstrated and promised to continue doing in real life. First is be, be accessible. Citizens say whatever they want, but if they're elected official, their public servant is not accessible to them, they're not going to be very effective for you. And I take great pride in it, and I've been very accessible either through email, personal contact, or phone call. Now obviously if you're going to be accessible, your public servant needs to be responsive. I take great pride in that as well. I don't know of a single case where a citizen has reached out to me that I have not responded and done so in a timely manner. Now granted, sometimes they're easy. It's just, just a simple question I'm able to answer or give direction to the citizen. But sometimes it takes some research, it takes some homework to find out the answers and get the needed information to that citizen that reached out to me. I feel very confident that if you ask a number of folks, not only in District 5, but also in the city, they will confirm that Tim Carroll has responded to their, their request. Third is be knowledgeable. Being knowledgeable is it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. There is a great stand-up period of time. I'm sure there's several in here that are elected that would give me a big amen on this. But your elected officials have to work hard and learn a lot about the various components of our local government, how they function and how they work. I take great pride in the fact that my reputation on council is being prepared and being knowledgeable. And I take great pride in that. The, uh, but i got to say thank you to the voters. Y'all have elected me to this office. They all helped appoint me to various things. I have 30 combined years serving on the Planning Commission, the Historic Preservation Commission, and now two terms on City Council. So you've given me the opportunity to learn a lot. Now what's important about that to you is this. I'm putting that knowledge to work for you each and every day. And my promise to you is I will put that knowledge to work to you if I'm real. Because it takes a lot of knowledge, a lot of connection to make things happen in the city. You know, as we think about all the various things that make things happen, those three things that make me a good public servant, or you believe that makes me a good public servant, the other thing that's critical, when we look at all the various issues that are facing our community, and there are numerous ones, the one I'd like to just take a moment tonight to talk about is economic development. Economic development is kind of an interesting bag of goods. No single entity really can do everything that needs to be done to recruit industry and create high paying jobs. What role your city plays, first and foremost, is infrastructure. And to give you an example, how many of y'all know about Martin's Famous Pictures? Plant that located here in town a few years ago brought with it very good paying jobs. Average yearly salaries $54,000 plus benefits. The kind of jobs that we're looking for here. Where your city government, working together, they have two important ingredients of why they located here. First was our water. They needed good quality water in the process of baking the goods that they made. We delivered. The other thing is, we gave them a wastewater treatment system that did not require them to pre-treat their effluents. Now, when I'm talking about effluents, I'm talking about the stuff going out. And a lot of cities do not have a wastewater treatment system that can handle heavy effluents and require these businesses to pre-treat. Obviously, that was an incentive to uh, Martins to come here because they didn't have that cost. They didn't have to come in with equipment to put in to pre-treat their efforts before they discharge into the city's wastewater treatment system. And then the next one is our ISO rating. Now, how many of you here know what an ISO rating is? We've got a few hands, not a lot of hands. 
ISO ratings is the international standards organization. And right now, our ISO rating in the city of Alaska is a two. How many in there pay uh, homeowners insurance, or renters insurance, property insurance? Your ISO rating determines how much you pay. Well, I'm proud to say, through accommodation efforts, through the mayor and council, great leadership, some of it under JD's uh, term, but now under Chief Broom. We just went through the ISO rating, and we believe, we're going to know in the next few weeks, we may have achieved an ISO rating of one. Now, what's so great about that? It's not only going to lower your homeowner's insurance, your renter's insurance, but more importantly, it's going to create, yet again, another incentive for industry to locate here because the cost of doing business will be lower. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about your city and economic development. These are things that I've been working on, I will continue to work on. My name is Steve Carroll. I'm seeking re-election for City Council District 5. Appreciate your continued support and more importantly, your vote. Thank you.